Um, uh, we look to your support as we make this very uh, important investment that we are starting to roll out literally from uh, the next uh, 10 days. I know you were there in the audience, um, but I still, uh, for the sake of uh, emphasis, will go through some of the issues that I spoke about. Um, so some of the key things, uh, I think many of you cover the paint sector or uh, know the paint sector well, so we'll just focus on uh, the key messages. We said that we are putting up 40% of the manufacturing capacity uh, of the current capacity that exists today, which has been built, uh, as you guys know better, over several decades. So that's a huge um, uh, foray. It's, it's something that's here to stay forever. By July of this month, by July of this year, we will have a presence in towns with uh, one lakh population, uh, and that will reach to towns with 50,000 of population uh, by the end of FY25. Target is to reach 6,000 ta towns by the end of this year, and like I said, uh, and I would like to repeat that there is no global example of any company in the business that has launched all of this together, manufacturing, services, such a large distribution network, um, so many ecosystem partners uh, all have been sort of brought together with digital uh, technology and with, uh, you know, strong personal interface over the last two, two and a half years. I don't think something of, or I, we know that something of this scale and something of this complexity has never been attempted uh, in uh, the paint sector. Uh, and I think that's all credit to the team. My Himanshu is here, who's... Uh, the business head. I think you, all, you guys know Rakshit as well. He's the COO. And uh, it's all credit to the team that they've been able to pull so much off uh, in just uh, less than three years. Commissioning three plants at a time, I mean, as a group, I have to say we've never done that before. So that in itself, in itself for ABG uh, is uh, a first. Uh, the capacity, we are going to be putting up a capacity of 1,332 million tons per annum. Like I said, it's 40% of the existing capacity in the industry. Uh, our capacity will be more than the rated capacity or current capacity of the number two, three, and four players put together. So obviously, it's a very disruptive um, you know, move in the, into the industry. We have uh, six plants, three of which we commissioned today, as you would have seen. Uh, we commissioned Panipat, Ludhiana, and Chayar. Chayar is uh, in Tamil Nadu, and all of these will start to deliver from next month to the market. Fourth plant is in Chamrajnagar, and uh, which is near Chennai, will be commissioned in the next few months, quarter one of FI25. Uh, the fifth in Mahad will be ready by second quarter of FI25, and finally uh, in Kharagpur in West Bengal by the last quarter of FI25. The total investment is 10,000 crores, um, six highly automated sustainable plants with uh, the best in-class technology anywhere in the world, integrated, connected factories using 4.0 manufacturing technology. So it's really the best plants with the latest technologies uh, anywhere in the world, which in itself is uh, a huge advantage uh, as opposed to any incumbent. Uh, we have about 2,800 people. Uh, in the Opus team, uh, diverse, very talented, very committed uh, team. I've seen them at work for more than two years, and I think uh, it's to the credit of the team that uh, they have been able to achieve in such a short time uh, what they have. And uh, we've said this before, but the ambition is to be the number two brand in the Indian decorative paints market. And uh, I think that is something that uh, all of us, right from me, right down to the junior most person at, at Opus is very determined uh, to achieve. It's just not about determination, it's also about the fact that preparation, a lot of preparation has gone uh, into this for the last two and a half years in order to ensure that this uh, is made to happen on the ground. Thank you again uh, for coming here. Very happy to take questions. Uh, for some of you who know me, I always do the simple job of making comments and I have People from the team are very kind always who 
take all the tough questions. We'll start with you, Minka. How much uh, can we expect of that 10,000 crores to be consumed over the course of the next couple of years? Okay. Uh, as uh, you are aware, this uh, venture is part of Grasim, and every quarter we release the final number. The cash flow, uh, if I remember correctly, what we re release at the end of December, the cash flow that we have uh, declared is 5,000 crores has already been spent and commitment has crossed 7,000 crores. Uh, by the time all the plants have been rolled out, we would have uh, spent the entire 10,000 crores. That's the last quarter of FY25, as Mr. Bill. That's right. right. And all of this is coming from Grasim. What is the other source of funding for this in terms of debt or otherwise? Uh, so Grasim is the promoter uh, and funding this. And uh, uh, currently, uh, they have a low debt to beta ratio, uh, but uh, uh, as we go forward, mm, uh, the guidance that we've given, if you remember, in the analyst call has been uh, between a maximum range, which will be always be below 3 to 3.5. So this 10,000 crores is coming this entirely is over from the Grasen. next three years. Coming entirely from Grasim. Funding is through debt yeah. and internal accruals, and as Grasim has said, the max. Uh, uh, debt to EBITDA that they'll have to raise uh, would be three to three and a half. So very comfortable uh, and very sort of easily doable on the balance sheet of Grasim is the point that they made. I just had one sir, supplement question to that. And that is, uh, we know that six plants and 40% of the industry capacity in itself a big plan. But have you worked out what the next steps might be in terms of further financing? Further financing. So I think the 10,000 crore, which is the first phase, like Mr. Villa and Manchu said, about six to 7,000 would come from borrowing and the rest will come from internal accruals. But at the moment, we obviously have a glide path for the next three to four years in terms of what are we going to spend. Um, and that is in keeping with our objective of doing 10,000 crores by the end of full operations of third year, where we also intend to be positive. So, uh, Manika, there, there are two parts to your question. What First part of the question is uh, when do we utilize this full 1332 for need for a next round of investment? So, and in that, the answer lies itself. We have already, uh, Chairman in his speech has said, our aspiration is 10,000 crore of revenue within the, th the three years of full scale operation, and that will make us profitable. If so, uh, so, uh, as you, you do the numbers, and uh, once we can become a profitable venture, it will be self-sustaining. Future financing will be self-sustaining by the operation. So, as soon as you will be profitable by FY28? I will be profitable as we cross the 10,000 crore, which will be within the three years of full-scale operation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Which means no additional capex. At this point of time. Yeah. So, so, sorry. You can't say there's no additional. Obviously, there will be, right? I mean, this is the line of sight that we have just now. We're spending. 10,000 crores, of which 7,000 is committed, 5,000 is spent. I think this will take us through to the next three years, four years. We don't need to spend more than that just now. Because we're straight away coming in with such large capacity. But as and when we reach uh, capacity utilization, that's at a level where we need to invest more. I don't think funding is an issue at all. That's the point that I'd like to make. Okay. So, so let me indicate, the way we have planned, we would be exiting uh, next financial year with a market share, revenue market share, which would be high single digits. So in the first year, it's important to look at market share month on month because you're growing very fast. And obviously, when we become 10,000 crores, you can calculate that the revenue will be in double digits. Actually, that was, uh, you know, what I was aiming at. You said that you have a glide path for investment. I wanted your thoughts on the glide path for revenue itself. Uh, the first year, the second year, the third year, how you get to 10,000. And the industry is likely to be uh, a lakh crore in three years. So that would mean double-digit market share by the end of third year. But you will still not be the number two player. You will still be the number three player. So by when do you intend to be the number two player? So uh, it's a, uh, I 
think it's a hypothetical question uh, at this uh, at this point of time. Uh, I want to register in your mind that decorative paints industry is 80,000 crores. Uh, their reporting revenues of existing players as a combination of multiple businesses, which includes industrial revenue and other unrelated businesses. We remain focused on a decorative paints business, and we remain confident of being number two within the three-year operations. We can do our maths outside this room, but we, we will continue to maintain our stand that we will be within three years operation in number two player rather than doing calculations. So you see other players also have industrial revenue. We only have decorative revenue. And the 10,000 crore that we will add will obviously take a pool from the growth which potentially could have come from other players. So if you do the max, we have a good chance of being number and two. Would you have a sense of the kind of investments that you will make in advertising over the first three years? Because the leader does about 1,100, 1,200 crores every year. So you see, our plan is to be competitive, and the investments that we will do will literally be in line with the market leader. That is what we have provided for. No, we are only looking at organic growth. The fact that we've come up with such a large capacity and the cost of reputation, I don't think we need to look at inorganic growth. That's not an option we are taking. Mr. Billa, this is uh, Sumit Chaturvedi from ET now. I would like to know, uh, apart from cement business, uh, what kind of synergies are you planning to have with other companies? And uh, even with cement business, what more synergies can come? And any cost so, you know, I think we've said this before, but there is a big overlap in distribution between the paints uh, business and white cement. As you know, we've been in white cement and uh, cement for several decades now. So there is a very strong connect and affinity with the dealers. The dealer network, you saw many of them over here, they've been our partners for, like I said, 30, 40 years. Uh, and that's our right to win, one of our rights to win, uh, which is uh, what made us look at this industry. Uh, I don't think that, that we're looking at synergies uh, with any other business. I think this is a strong enough synergy. Uh, and I think the fact that we've been able to sign up 3,000 plus dealers even before we've started to sell, uh, I think is a huge uh, testament to that. Sir, Tarun from Z Business, sir. Uh, sir, there are two questions. First on, uh, is there any plan to bundle with the cement and paint, sir? Will you give No, any no, no, not at all. Not at all. Secondly, sir, can we, um, you are talking about the decorative uh, paint segment. Do you have any plan to enter into industry and as well as the commercial part of that? No, there is no plan at this point of time. Just a uh, follow-up on, uh, you know, being the second largest player by the end of three years. Paint is also a valuation driver from a stock market standpoint. Would you at some point look to demerge the paint business and unlock value there? No, no. We are just about launching and just creating a new uh, division in Rising. We've really not got any thoughts about demerging. I don't think that that's in the offing at all. So, uh, I think... Uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, our focus is, our pricing will be consumer-centric, and there will be assurance written all across the consumer. Consumer, for us, uh, the first and foremost frontier that we have to win, win the hearts of consumers. We have to reach this paint into homes of consumers. And uh, our belief is that the, at the bottom end of the pyramid, there is... Uh, a crazy, uh, crazy battle, but at the top end of the pyramid, the luxury and premium end, which is where India is going, there is hardly any options available for consumers. The quality of products that we have designed allows us to be able to focus in a large way on the luxury and the premium end of the consumers. And we will make sure that consumers love us at that end. Sir, I am Alok Priyadarshi, CNBC Awaaz, sir. My question is that you have talked about your aspirational class in your speech, that the aspirational class and especially the housing sector is good. So, I would like to say that the aspirational class is price sensitive, although it is also trying to move the luxury segment. So, do you have any idea about the pricing or 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 any idea about the aspirational class or any idea about the financial scheme or anything like that? 
तो देखिए पहली बात तो ये है कि हमारे जितने प्रोडक्ट्स आ रहे हैं लग्जरी प्रीमियम और इकोनॉमी अगर आप इकोनॉमी के भी प्रोडक्ट्स को देखें जो पेंटरों और कॉन्ट्रैक्टरों ने उन्हें यूज़ करके देखा है वो बोलते हैं कि ये तो हमें प्रीमियम प्रोडक्ट के जैसा लग रहा है तो क्वालिटी काफ़ी अच्छी है तो हमें तो ये लगता है कि जो लोग डिस्टेम्पर कैटेगरी वाले भी हैं वो इकोनॉमी रेंज में अपग्रेड कर जाएंगे और जो इकोनॉमी वाले हैं उनको पीएम वाली फिनिश मिलेगी उसमें दूसरी तरीके से अगर आप देखो तो कंज्यूमर के लिए हम आगे चल करके दूसरे तरह के ऑफर्स ला रहे हैं जिसमें उनको पेंट खरीदना पेंट करना हमारे डीलरों से डायरेक्ट जो हम पीओ सिस्टम लगा रहे हैं उनको काफ़ी आसानी होगी तरह तरह के ट्रांजेक्शन करने के लिए तो उस हिसाब से आप देखोगे कि इस इकोनॉमी क्लास के लिए जिनको एस्पिरेशन चाहिए हमारे पेंट से उनको कहीं ज़्यादा मिलेगा जो आज के मुकाबले में So you know we will be disclosing our pricing in the first week of March when we hit the market. So I would not want to comment on the exact pricing, but I can give you, like Himanshu was saying, uh, we will give great value to the people who buy the lower order paints, so they will get more for less, and we will be competitive in the higher segments. So they will get yeah they will get more for less. Yeah, yeah, they will get so our paints our economy paints have a coverage which is 20% more than what no 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 so well so the price assuming our price is assuming our base price is 100 but he will be able to cover 120% area with the same paint so the painter and the contractor the overall bill to the consumer will actually be lower not really not really even at all i think that you know markets decide prices um uh, and prices find their own levels always uh i think as is a market share strategy uh we have added that much of volume in terms of the production capacity and i don't think that we are looking at pricing as a primary strategy mr mr bella this I is i think uh, you have to see it okay slightly uh, differently uh, you over focus on demand led and our belief is this is a supply led uh, requirement this there is going to be transformation in this in this sector the currently painting cycle is seven year cycle uh, and our aim with higher uh, by being able to give higher uh, quality of products and be, be able to reach with our uh, contemporary brand to the gen x to reduce the painting cycle and improve the consumption of paint if Uh, we believe that the demand uh, rather than over focus on demand side that's where the pricing pressure comes in supply side is going to be the more important element that's why the 40% percent. Can I just that's impossible to say I mean, I mean, you can just you could say that if it's growing at X percent, you probably get increment aim to get incremental share from that X percent of maybe 60, 70 percent. But to give a number as to how much will come from the existing pie and how much will you know will come from the growing pie is going to be a tough one. Mr. Billa, this is uh, Shombit here from the Telegraph. Other other way to uh, Mr. Billa, you mentioned uh, this is Shombit here from the Telegraph, Calcutta. you mentioned that uh, you have put up such a large capacity at the cost of reputation so i wanted at the cost of reputation you just uh, said that much so i just wanted to uh, i just insane i think you must have heard it wrong what is reputation okay okay so my question is that when did you first get this idea because you have said that you had this such thing has never been attempted at such a large scale so this is something industry first paint wise worldwide when did that idea first came and did you draw inspiration from any other industry the kind of uh, disruptive uh, the challenge that you are throwing to the other competition and shaking up the market? not not really we thought about it about 3 and a half years ago that's when the thought uh, first occurred um in some way it's a natural extension to the white and uh, gray cement business that like i said in my speech there is no inspiration we've taken for from any one particular uh, player Hi uh, this is Nikita from the Economic Times 
I want to understand what is the average uh, repainting cycle that you have assumed when uh, factoring in the demand. And uh, from a dealer perspective, apart from the tinting machines and refinancing, uh, the financing that uh, they will get from the capital business, are there any other measures that you know you would like to uh, tell us about? Uh, so I think the first part and I'll request Rakshit to do the second. Um, as regards uh, what you are saying, is one, there is a business model, and second is action. Our focus has been on action. We on ground, as you uh, heard Mr. Birla, have, are unleashing a series of programs which will help expand the market. What are those series of programs? Number one, painting as a, uh, as a part of, uh, of the company. Number two, introduction of franchise stores. Number three, partnership with painters and, and contractors. Number four, extra warranty uh, and obviously the quality of products. All of this in our belief are going to lead to a shorter cycle and also we, we believe that as the economy booms at the current levels, there is a natural reason for consumers to spend more. They have been spending more in automobiles, in mobile phones, in, uh, in other digital elements, painting as a category has not got the priority it requires. When competition enters, a loss of branding activity happens. It's a natural process. The attention of consumers will increase. Uh, good afternoon. So, so I'll let me answer the second part. What all are we doing for the dealer? So dealer financing, yes. Through Aditya Birla Capital, we are extending a financing program. But let me give you some other steps that will actually drive benefit for the dealer. The first is we are introducing a first kind of tinting machine. The tinting machine uh, graphical user interface program is directly connected to our servers. So I will be the only company which will know on a live basis what product is being tinted, what shade is being tinted. Today, that system, if my competition has to do, they do it on a batch level where they have to go manually download information and then process it. Hence, it does not happen efficiently. When I'm able to do this, my ability to control the supply chain and inventory of my dealers would be far superior. So with a far lesser inventory, they will actually be able to do better business. Secondly, I'm also implementing a point of sale system, which through my track and trace, because I'm able to track the pack from my factory down to the dealer, I will know exactly what is the sellout from a dealer. In FMCG business, as you would know, sellout is a basic mechanism. You know what sellout is happening mm -hmm. from a distributor. We would be able to measure sellout happening from dealers. I will actually be able to promote programs with dealers which are sellout based. Hence, he will actually get rewarded for what is he selling out and not what he's buying from the company, which today is a challenge where they are being forced to buy with attractive primary schemes and they end, end up running with 50, 60 day inventory. So there are several measures which will take place on the ground, which will make the operation of my dealers much more efficient, which will actually reduce the need for external financing for them. But these will take... How many tinting machines are you targeting? Okay, so let me give you. We are targeting to cover 50,000 dealers in the first year. Our plan is to give tinting machines to as many. Of the 3,500 dealers that we have onboarded till now, we have given tinting machines to 95% of them. So very willingly dealers are taking our tinting machines. They're also 40% smaller in terms of size. And Mr. Sir, I mean, I just, uh, you know, because you said it's a supply side strategy that you're using in terms of growth. I mean, that's not even particularly fair for capacity. The capacity that is there is still 75% utilized with a lot of them having announced increments in capacity as well. So what gives you the confidence that with this capacity, there would be revenue? So uh, I don't agree with their point of view. Uh, what do you define as capacity? To us, quality and capacity are an integral part. Quality, capacity is at, uh, is not available at scale and size. Otherwise, we won't have a situation what is the current market structure of the industry. This is a unique industry where there is a single player which has such large market share. If they were, they were, so I can assure you that high quality capacity, is, there is a large gap, and that's what our internal study shows. 
Good afternoon, sir. I just want to very quickly take one question in terms of what key trends are influencing the paint industry and how does Birla Opus strategically incorporate these trends into its products and offerings? And my name is Vibhor Shravasta from ITB, ITP Media. Can I just uh, take this one? Okay, so, you know, we would not want to comment on industrial paints, but decorative paints, if you also take a look at the macroeconomic indicators, is going at double digits. We believe that it will grow in better double digits for the next five years. There is no stopping. If you also take a look at the investment in infrastructure that is happening, uh, it is a given that this is going to be one of the greenfield industries. Coming to your question, see, there are multiple trends, both at a macroeconomic level and at a consumer level, which are shaping painting. Number one, the repainting cycle is definitely getting shorter. You have a case of people who are moving from joint families to nuclear families. So there are people who are taking up smaller homes. There is this trend of not painting your full house, but they want to get a wall done. So the occasions for painting are becoming much more consumer friendly and much more, as you would say, uh, they have been broken down into parts. Secondly, the painting industry is also getting redefined because the whole element of waterproofing, which is very functional, is suddenly growing as a category where people are realizing that, oh, if I have to do get painting, I also need to do waterproofing. Third is the growth in the rental market. You see, people change leases every two years, every three years. The landlord and the tenant, they agree that the house has to be repainted before they occupy. So the number of short cycle paintings are also growing up. So. At the same time, you know, personal experiences, what we also have from research, somebody who's painting a house in five years, even if he's from LSM4, or you know, you might say SEC D1, they want to buy a premium paint. They say that if I'm getting a house painted for five years, after five years or after six years, I don't want to compromise on the quality. So we also see a massive shift towards premiumization. You look at the papers for the last five days, which segment is actually doing better? It's the premium and the luxury segment. I'm not even talking about luxury. So I think there are multiple indicators. And therein lies the opportunity. Why we want to appear as a consumer-focused tech-enabled company is that the whole consumer journey of painting today is complicated. If you have to house, you know, paint your house tomorrow, you will have four questions for which you will not have an answer. Most likely, you might end up asking a neighbor, did you get your house painted? The model, the intuitive model that we have created will make this journey very easy. Huh? We have online consultation, we have digital consultation. So we have taken into account the change in the consumer behavior. You see, all that has been factored in, which is why we believe that the consumption cycle will go down and also the frequency of painting will go up, actually expanding the market and justifying the higher capacities which are going to lie above. Uh, Aishwarya from Money Control. So you had mentioned about uh, building a formidable network across 6,000 towns for distribution, right? So uh, do you plan to synergize with the existing Billa White or Ultratech Cement to build this network, or is there any other strategies in place? So uh, just for clarity, uh, Mr. Billa had spoken about 100,000 paint dealers. In the hierarchy of paint, the, uh, uh, you could paint a house at the low, lowest end with a white cement wash, then you move to a putti, and then you follow it with a distemper or a economy paint or a premium paint and luxury paint. So uh, Billa White has already been supplying to these 100,000 dealers. Out of that, about 65% of them, the, their brand, of, as Mr. Billa mentioned, over the last two to three decades. And there is a relationship that exists. However, these are multi-brand dealers. There is no exclusive relationship that exists. So what we intend to encash is the relationship with the dealer to be able to make our first entry. But after we made our first entry, our products, our services will speak for itself. Uh, Reba from Times of India. <coughs> so I want to ask you, uh, your foray into uh, the new segment, the paints, comes after a decade or so. Why did it take so long for a group like yours to enter a new segment? Number two, this also indicates that you're ramping up your consumer business. So how does the future look like in the consumer space? So you know, there's no question as to the right, there's no right time. Um, 
So I don't have a, a genuine answer to that, but you know, we've had a hands full with a lot of growth uh, in our existing businesses. Maybe that's one reason why, uh, but there is no right time. Yes, we are moving towards more consumer facing businesses because I think that's, that's where the world is moving. Uh, even for our uh, industrial or com commodity businesses, the mandate is to go closer and closer to the customer by uh, going down the value chain. So I think that's, that's a mandate for every business. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Diksha Sripati from Economic Times. So amid uncertainty about, uh, around you know, Middle East and Ukraine affecting the oil prices, uh, what prompts this foray into the business that into a sector that is heavily dominated by you know, uh, big market players and established players already? Sure. What the uh, what is? Why did that? You know, oil is one of the major, uh, uh, you know, raw materials for you for your business. So, about around such uncertain times and volatile crude oil prices, what prompts this for it? So, in the chemistry of paints, uh, there are multiple elements. As we mentioned, uh, we are going to have in-house uh, emulsions and resins, and uh, we will make out of it the monomers that come for them are the only, primarily the only ones which are uh, linked to oil. So there's a certain percentage which is linked to oil, uh, but that's a global issue and uh, market prices may uh, get linked to whatever is the movement of uh, oil. So I will not be over worried about crude movement because the market prices naturally take care of that. And it's only a small percentage of the total raw materials. Rest of the raw materials, the fillers, the pigments, uh, mm, and uh, remaining uh, components, uh, titanium dioxide, they are not crude like uh, raw materials. Sir, uh, Tarun from Business. Sir, you mentioned about the consumer uh, centric business, sir. Sir, you have talked about all the businesses in your speech, which were consumer centric. But, sir, you have not talked about Vodafone, Telecom. So, what is the group ship? You are just picking out Vodafone. We remain very committed to Vodafone and like we've said in public domain, uh, uh, efforts are on to uh, get outside investors. Um, and you know, and I don't know what's prompting your question. I think we remain as committed that, uh, to it as we have been in the past. Since, Vod since Vodafone was uh, spoken about. I don't want to get into Hindalco. Let's just stick to uh, paints. No, we keep scanning new opportunities, but you know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin as well. Um, so, there's nothing else that is in the works that we haven't put out in public domain, let's put it that way. in the national building also and uh, Rakshit just mentioned about how the premium segment is growing but the economy segment and the price sensitive segments are not growing. So as an industry leader when you look at the condition of the country right now how happy or unhappy are you with the way the growth has taken place in different segments especially in at the bottom of the, uh, in the different segments of the uh, economy especially in the bottom of the pyramid. I, I think that's a question for another time you can take an hour uh, to sort of debate this and discuss this. But I think that, like I said, the Indian economy, I think, is doing extremely well. I feel very proud as an industrial industrialist, as an Indian. And like I said, uh, there is no other large economy in the world that has, that is looking forward to multi-decadal uh, high growth, whether it's 6% or 8% is anyone's guess. Uh, and I think that truly India is shining today. When I travel abroad, it becomes even more stark because that's the same sentiment that gets echoed over there as well. So, I, like I said, we don't talk about anything but pain just now. Mr. Bella, who will be the brand ambassador of Bella Opus? Have you decided on someone? Okay. 
this is not a question for me. <laughs> I think the brand ambassador will be the brand itself. You will see how it will evolve. Uh, so that's the answer for the moment. Can you give us some color on how ugly it's going to get? Uh, I don't think, uh, I think uh, the press is taking a slight different way. The narrative was there's some, there Sir, is, you said just, this on let stage. me just com yeah. complete. The narrative was that uh, uh, someone is getting uh, needlessly uh, anxious and there is no reason. And that's why this press conference we're trying to put across there is no reason for any deal of anxiety. Who's getting anxious? <laughs> I mean, now I'm even more anxious? confused. Let me ask you all, who would get anxious? Which, it would be some competitor or competition, right? So that's fine. Whenever there is a new large player that comes into an industry, there is bound to be some anxiety. What we are saying is that we believe that there's enough and more space for a large player like us. That's the point that is important to take away for you. Okay, I think now you have to see what happens in the market. Fail? Thank you. Thank you, everyone.